My Lord can move the highest mountain through the desert make a way there is no power can stand before him he's the truth the life the way the partners and friends of the People's Cathedral in St. Michael Barbados challenge you to let Jesus Christ move all your mountains this is Pastor Holmes Williams speaking. For he can move the highest mountain, make a way across the sea. On the broadcast today, I want to speak to you on the subject a greater than Solomon. The texts in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, these words from verse 42. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. I'd like to speak to you on this subject, to greater than Solomon is here. Jesus said some great things about himself. Thinking of this world's darkness, he said, I'm the light of the world. Thinking of man's lost condition, his bondage and sin, Jesus said, I am the door. Thinking of our waywardness, he declared, I am the way. Reflecting on our need for protection, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I will look after you. I will care for you and will nourish you. I will pick out the good pasture land. I will see that you lack nothing. I am the good shepherd. Thinking of our fruitlessness, he said, I am the vine. Thinking of the world's deadness and sin, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Then one day, thinking of Solomon's wisdom, of Solomon's glory and of Solomon's greatness, he said, Behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Now, you may not appreciate how ridiculous that statement sounded to those who heard it. If you lived back in those days and you were there, you would have resented Jesus making that statement of himself. And you would have said, surely this man is going out of his mind. He's becoming foolish. He's going crazy. He's not balanced. He's not real. Something is wrong. But Jesus declared, behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Now, he had just condemned their creeds, he had torn to pieces their self-righteousness, and then he made this statement which I have chosen for my text. When the people heard it, they clenched their fists and there were shouts of resentment, shoulders were shrugged, all kinds of dirty remarks were cast at Jesus because of what he had said. But let's look and see why the people reacted that way to the statement of Jesus. I think that you would be in a better position to appreciate why they resented his statement. You see, Solomon was born in a palace, in a great big palace. Jesus was born amongst cattle in a barn and was placed on straw with just some clothes covering the straw. Solomon came from great Jerusalem, Jesus from an unknown tongue. Solomon had many servants, Jesus had not one. Solomon sat and ruled on a throne for 40 years on this earth. Jesus never once on the earth. Up to the time which he made this statement, and up to this very hour in which I am speaking, he has not assumed control of this world and sat on an earthly throne. Solomon wore kingly robes, beautiful robes trimmed with gold and silver and the best of materials of that day. Jesus walked around dressed in humble peasant's garb. When Solomon would sit down at the table to eat his meals, his water or his wine or his drinks were served in vessels of gold. Jesus had to ask a Samaritan harlot for a drink from a beaten-out old drinking utensil. Solomon had much money, Jesus none. Solomon had armies, armies, well-trained, disciplined armies, bright men, brilliant men, strapping men. They had to go through the paces of physical exercises, had to keep themselves trim. Their muscles were in good shape. There was no flabbiness. They were in excellent physical condition, strong men. But Jesus had to ask fishermen, tax collectors, and the scum of the earth to be his followers. Yet this man had the audacity, the boldness, the presumption, no doubt, they thought to make this statement, Behold, a greater than Solomon is here. You see, Solomon had built great cities. Jesus Christ, growing up in the carpenter's shop, working together with his father, had only been occupied in building chairs and tables and benches and furniture and so on on this earth. Solomon had lived in mansions. Jesus had not where to lay his head. Solomon commanded great navies, had a lot of boats. Jesus had to borrow a fishing boat 
from a poor fisherman. Solomon had 1,400 chariots, 12,000 horsemen, 40,000 stalls of horses. He rode in comfort and splendor, whereas Jesus walked the dusty streets of Judea and Samaria, and he walked them rarely. Solomon drove in splendor and in comfort, yet Jesus said, A greater than Solomon is here. But I would like to take a few minutes for, to compare the two men a little further. Look with me at a number of things. And let us see what the Word of God has to say. First of all, let us compare the wisdom of Solomon with the wisdom of Jesus. We know that Solomon was a very wise man and didn't ask for fame. He didn't ask for popularity. But he did ask God for wisdom, and God gave to him the desires of his heart, and he was the wisest man that ever walked the earth outside of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of Solomon was in him to do judgment, that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. He was wiser than all men, and his fame was in nations rung about. And they came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon. All the kings of the earth had heard of his wisdom. The word of God goes on to say that when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove him with hard questions. And Solomon told her all her questions, and all the earth sought Solomon to hear his wisdom which God had put in his heart. The queen of Sheba, after she had tried him with hard questions, declared, The half has not been told. He was a wise man. His wisdom came from God. But look at Jesus Christ. One day they brought a man to him, and introduced him to Jesus. Jesus, this is Nathanael. Nathanael, this is Jesus. He said to Nathanael, I saw you when you were under the fig tree. I know the conversation you're engaged in now. I saw you back there before you came. He penetrated the secret of Nicodemus coming to him, and he perceived that the man needed a relationship with God, and he said to him, You must be born again. One day he went out of his road to stop by just outside of a city the city of Samaria. And about the noon hour, while the disciples went to get some lunch to bring back to him, Jesus sat down there because he knew that a harlot was going to come out who would need him, who would need his help. A lady who had lived so loosely that, that the tongue had no uses for her. She was notorious as far as the city was concerned for her dealings with men. And this harlot came out at the time when nobody else normally would come to draw water from the well. You see, the decent people would come in the morning early and in the evening. And this still happens in eastern countries today. I've seen that myself, where they would come early in the morning and late in the evening, and those who were the outcasts, those who were no good, those who were looked upon would come when the sun was hot and nobody would normally draw water at that time. When she came to draw water, she found a man there, Jesus, the one who's greater than Solomon, and so they got into conversation, and Jesus started talking about a different kind of water, a water that when you drink of it, you'll never thirst again. And she said, give me of this water. And Jesus turned to this lady whom he had never met before, about whom he knew nothing as far as hearing through the lips of any human being, and said, go call your husband. She said, I have no husband. And I'm sure she felt good to be able to tell Jesus that. I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have rightly spoken, because you have had five husbands, and the one that you are living with now you are not married to. That woman was astonished that a stranger whom she had met for the first time could tell her everything about herself, and she perceived that he was the Son of God, that he was Messiah, that indeed he was a prophet. And so she took off for the city of Samaria, and she got an audience with everybody. She summoned them. And she said, come, I want you to see a man. And they said, oh, no, not another one. Not another one. This is too much. Now five she had. She has had. The one she is living with is not hers. And now she wants us to come with her because she has found, she has found the ideal man. For she says, come, see a man. People, I'm not talking the way you're thinking. But I want you to see a man that is different from any man that I have ever had dealings with before. 
a man who today met me a few hours ago. He met my thirst. He satisfied my longings. He has put a new desire in my heart. He worked a miracle in my life. He changed me. He transformed me. He delivered me. And I want you to see a man who told me everything that I ever did. I want you to see a man who has the answer to all of your problems. If he solved mine, he can solve yours. Come, come quickly. And the whole village came out to see this man. I tell you that day, if this woman knew about this text, she would have exclaimed, A greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Solomon is here. I want you to see him, for he's a wonderful person. He is precious. Regardless of how messed up your life is, you may be bound today by one vice or another vice. It may be drugs. It may be nicotine. It may be alcohol. It may be loose living. It may be lust. It may be anger, greed. It may just be sin, but I have news for you. There's a man here today whose name is Jesus. He can set you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus is in this service. A greater than Solomon is here. He's there with you. He knew the hidden thoughts of his disciples while he walked ahead of them. He could tell what they were discussing behind his back. Jesus, a greater than Solomon, he knew who was going to betray him. He knew when the time had arrived, and he said to Judas, Go and do what you have to do quickly. He knew the secret plottings of his enemies. He knew that they were coming to arrest him. He instituted the Last Supper, and then he went out to a place of quietness so that he could draw strength for the ensuing hours, the hours that would follow those difficult trying hours, when friends would desert him. His disciples would deny him. They would spit in his face and pluck out his beard and beat him. He went alone to get strength. Oh, thank God for Jesus. Jesus is greater than Solomon as far as wisdom was concerned. But then he's greater than Solomon in many different ways. For instance, Solomon knew something of God's creation. The Bible says, And he spoke of the trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spoke also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and all fishes. Yes, Solomon spoke about them. He had read much. He had learnt much. He had inquired much. He had investigated. He had proved much through his experience. He could talk about the trees, about the fish, about the beasts, about the fall of the air, about all creeping things. He could only talk about them. But the one who said a greater than Solomon is here is the one who made all things. For the word of God says, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether it be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he's before all things, and by him all things consist. No wonder he's a greater than Solomon. I trust today that he's your friend, that he's your savior, that he's on your side. I trust that he rules and controls your life. For behold, I tell you, a greater than anybody else is Jesus. He's the answer to your problems. On the next broadcast, I want to continue on this message. A greater than Solomon is here. Father, I thank you for stretching forth your hand. I thank you for satisfying the needs, the longing, the hunger, the thirsts of those people in this audience today who need a touch, who need satisfaction, who are desperately longing for that which is real in life, that which lasts. I ask you to do it for them, Father, through Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to send you a copy of today's message in its entirety, A Greater Than Solomon. It's message number 1042. To receive it, write to Christ as the answer Barbados, and I'll get the message to you right away. Holmes Williams wishing you God's richest blessing. Bye-bye. Wandering aimlessly, thirsting endlessly, all I found was bitter water from an earthly stream. How my soul did cry, how I feared to die, everlasting life was just a dream. Water from the rock is what I needed, water from which no one is denied. And when I came to Christ for my salvation, I found Jesus was the rock that sat